blower blast off. Those snoops are trying to find out about our new weapon. So let's give them a little education. Welcome back to the Tiger Hammer Hangar. This is Mike. Today I want to talk to you about the X Trans Bots Shock Trooper, the MX 28T Fast and Fury 29T. This is their take on Runabout Runabout. This is the second versions that they put out. These are the youth version or toy version, and they have a different accessory, slightly different paint scheme, and they look pretty visually interesting. I will tell you that everything worked pretty much the same as the originals. Uh, tightness in the hips. I'll show you how to overcome that without breakage or anything like that, but I did get these at show Z store. Uh, I'm going to have a link down for you down below. These are currently sold out, but I think they're just pre processing their pre-orders and then they'll have them back up, but there's also pre-orders for the first ones. But let's get a look at this. Let's get a comparison to the first set of these and to the G1 coming up. Right, and for the packaging, uh, quite G1-esque, I must have to say. This look like the standard packaging. Usually they have some sort of an Easter egg on their packaging, like what's coming next? Do they? Doesn't look like they do, this go around. But still, pretty cool G1-esque packaging overall. All right, here they are right out of the package, and they are packaged in the alt mode, and I think the alt modes look striking. They look very nice. Uh, they did a great job with them. They did a great job the first go-around, but this updated de deco, deco, deco paint looks really nice. So starting over here with this one, we got a nice gold stripe down it all the way, and for whatever reason, I guess this came unengaged. Let's pop that back in. They do have the rubber tires, and they do roll pretty well, and in this mode, looking pretty good. Uh, the rear, so we've got these these lights, and if you remember back in the day, they just kind of looked uh, dark, darkened out, and you didn't see the lights till they light up, that kind of effect from back in the day. Oh, the doors do open, so that, that's the gimmick. I think it looks like it's easier to open this one on this side. It opens up, and then my understanding is that you can also flip this up somehow to see a little more inside. Yeah, so my first go-around, I didn't know that. You you can open... So this just opens out also, once you've opened the door, so you can see the seats. So all that work for seats and steering wheel. The steering wheel is in the windshield. I I, I could have done without the gimmick. I don't, I've been okay with it. it. It It's not necessary for me at all but it, it is quite a bit of work to make it look just have a door open and it not really be correct but it's uh something that they did to make the alt mode better and i think even the hood pops up so that you can reveal in there the good old engine what was it a good old v8 did they put a 12 under this yeah it's pretty nice but more gimmicks that I don't really find 100% necessary in a masterpiece. Now let's look at this guy here and a lot of the same stuff, same gimmicks. Oh yeah, we do have the pop-up headlights, which I don't know if I'm going to get into that. They should both have pop-up headlights. And I remember it being easy on the other ones to get the headlights to pop up. But anyway, so this the, the big difference on this one here is the fact that it has the clear windshield and they both have clear but that other one is so dark it's hard it's, it's not really noticeable but it's clear but then there's nothing really to see inside it's just more of an aesthetic cue for it having the clear windshields and it's kind of cool looking also we have clear on the actual taillights unlike the other one which isn't clear so it's going into a clear segment and that's kind of cool and these doors open too same sort of gimmick, and this hood opens. I think it's a reverse opening hood. Get the get the party started off the camera so I don't scratch it or anything, but that's how a Lotus Esprit would open. DeLorean, I think DeLorean's open like that too. And uh, the hood is storage. The engine's all in the rear. She's got it in the rear. Anyway, realistic, actual... 
side view mirrors and then it's the driver's side easier to open like the other one and then we can open this too and reveal the inside of the car and all that good stuff rubber tires some great looking rims uh decent paint and yeah these are painted really well that is paint that's not just shiny plastic that's high quality high-end paint and done a great job on these if you're going to keep them in alt mode i was considering keeping them in alt mode but i guess i should transform them for the video right here they go for size comparison with some of my usual suspects here that i usually keep on hand for review they seem to fit remember he's supposed to be a super cyber truck before cyber truck was a thing but yeah i think that fits scale wise i mean it's the scale is for the butt and then it re First engineers to the car, I guess we could look at it like that. This works for me. And the truck prime cab comparison. And prime should be way bigger than these guys, but I'm I'm happy. Alright, so here they are in their bot modes. I wanna say that they do look really good. And I believe I don't have it in front of me, but I believe this is more of a closer to a black on the runabout than the charcoal gray on the first release, which I think is an improvement, which of course the vintage toy was black, so they wanted to match it, but it's not jet black, but it is much, much closer. And then over here on this one here, the gold is kind of striking, but I want to get into, before we just look at the figures so much, the accessories, and they have these shoulder mounted cannons that you have a sliding mechanism which is probably not going to slide on me a sliding mechanism and a tab and they, they tab into the back and anyway you tab it into the back and then you slide it in to hold it into place and that's what that's for the reason for that is because the toys had those weapons even though i don't have any weapons like that for mine because i didn't actually buy mine mine came in lots and i didn't even know what they were for a few years till I was like, oh, that's runabout and runabout? Okay. But we'll do that comparison here in a little while. But yeah, it's like my first time ever dealing with that accessory. And the way they did it, the vintage one didn't slide, it just clipped on. But this sliding mechanism is kind of cool. They also come with standard guns like they did before, and they come with a little oil can from an episode. And that is pretty cool. Now, getting into looking at the actual aesthetic of these. So there's a lot to love here, and there's a, there, there's one problem though, and not so much on him as bad, but look at when you try to move this, you, let's get that, you see how the hip is flexing? It's so tight, it's flexing the hip. If you want to rotate this, you need to rotate it by holding the front and the back of the hip as you rotate, or it will break right here. It will break right here. I can feel it trying to break on me. I think it was the issue with the first ones too, but it is super, super tight. Now, it's not a ratchet in there. It's all friction, so they have it super tight so that it holds its pose, it does well. But until you, I say, move it a lot and give it freed up to where it's not going to break right here at the hip, I would hold the front and the back very, with a lot of pressure as I'm turning this thigh joint. This, that's just, uh, I, it's an issue. But it's there for a reason, so it has support, the friction, and that's really the only big downside of these guys. Other than that, they both look really, really good. And I noticed that the thighs are pretty solid on this side too, but they loosened up much quicker. Uh, maybe it's gonna be a problem in the future that they will be too loose. But I know they, they don't really have offer much of a way to tighten them. So once they loosen up, they loosen up forever. But that's super tight. Now, I have a super slim profile. That's how they go from a, a really kind of normal size car into this big of a figure. It's It looks nice. It's a, I like the size. This is how tall I would like all the Autobot Carbots to be also. And they're nice and clean on both sides. I'm having a little trouble getting that lower tab to stay tabbed in but it's not too big of a deal and it's probably a me thing fighters don't have those aligned exactly just right 
but getting into the paint they are painted all over very well you really do see it over here on this one the paint all over and uh just when it comes to the white it's just a little harder to discern what's painted and what's just cast in the plastic but it's probably painted all over it's got kind of a speckle to it kind of a a nice sheen to it also but the big differences aren't so much on this one with the with the darker complexion it's this one here with the gold accents i think are a much better um, well i don't say it's better it's it's a much different aspect and of course that is how the toy looked we'll see that when we do the comparisons and the orange in here is an orange on the other one so we'll also compare this to the first ones of course because we need to but yeah they look good is it worth the extra like eight bucks versus the originals if you want these then they definitely are i'm gonna do some quick articulation the head does move around down and up it actually has a bit down to it too uh shoulders you'd have you could move this out of the way to get more out of that shoulder if you want to bicep swivels are real loose then we have 90 at the elbow and you got typewriter fingers and uh yeah you don't even have a separate pointer finger on these but i, I don't mind it's not really going to bother me that much waist swivel ab crunch really good job with engineering in that ab crunch like they did uh you hip hip flap this up and goes out to about there and then it has a moving hip flap along with it now it is ratcheted in the inside here but it's not ratcheted uh, in the rest of it and then the thigh swivel i've loosened up i loosened up the other side actually but they are a little bit looser on this guy then you got the knee a little bit past the 90 it's not double jointed don't really need that that much and then you got on the foot side to side and up and down kind of like the first release and plenty of articulation with these guys just remember to be careful with those hips you don't want to throw you don't want them throwing out a hip as he's drinking his oil or whatever all right so how do they stack up in comparison to the vintage and they have some similarities so we can see that this is more a darker black than the first release not quite jet black but pretty close to the original you do have the red and the red they didn't go like the super kind of neon looking red like they did with this one and even in the face i don't have extra faces so the faces really aren't exactly like it but you do kind of have this face the mouth covered so that does kind of work for that one Coming over here same kind of things they added in the orange into it so that's something different you see the gold on the arms is added in and then the gold accents down here on this lower which you probably really can't see it but there's gold accents on that that are added in to give it that look they did maintain the kibble it is funny that you, they had to engineer all this kibble to match the toy a little bit more and the character a little bit more and i think it's pretty cool that they did it it, it really works out the way they did it it's the very rear end unplugs from the rear end and through a series of like five different pieces holding it together you can reorganize it on his back so that's how that works it's pretty cool and interesting but matching the toy yeah they even have the fat as place for the faction symbol to go and there's the it's it's set in here not really set in but it's kind of squared off still some really cool stuff that they've done with this and it works it matches the toy i'll just re remind everybody the vintage toy sucks yeah that's what it does that that's that's the this one popped up better that's all it does and it sucks because they put this gimmick into it that didn't work very well now of course mine are old and they stick so i'm judging it on old poor condition figures that i got freed a lot somewhere now for the comparison that i think is the most important and that is compared to well the vintage and the first one so we see the differences from the first releases and we can see the differences from the g1 so we've already looked at g1 though we're gonna take this out and get my clickbait in there i want to point out that this over here is much darker it's closer to a jet black and this is more of kind of like a charcoal 
if you can see that. And uh, I'll just go ahead and pull this, pull them forward, and we'll have a look at that because that's the difference. And I do think that I really feel like the first go around, he should have been this color. He should have been this dark. This is a, a little too light of a charcoal for the first go around. And I do think that that these new ones are going to make it on my shelf, on my main display. I'm not getting rid of any, any of them, but my main display is going to have these new ones. I think the new ones do have a better color scheme to them than the first set. But the first set's still not bad. It's not bad at all. It's definitely cool. But I love this darker color. And I didn't actually realize it was going to be this much darker when I pre-ordered them. But I'm glad I got them. And that looks pretty good. So... Moving it back over to here, the accessories, I think the accessories are a little more uh, orangish on the first release and a little redder on the second release. So bringing these guys in here, I will say, and I've noticed it throughout, it seems like these pieces here and these pieces here are a different color than all of the rest of it. And over here, everything's more uniform. All the way across even these pieces here are a little closer to the rest of it than what we're seeing right here but it could also just be my angle that i'm looking at it but it just feels like these three pieces and the two big pieces down here are a different color but the colors that really changed on purpose are the, these gold stripe here and the gold down here and then the orange and it adds it makes it a little bit more interesting to look at i felt like this was a little bit too plain in the beginning in the first place and maybe maybe if i get these at the same angle that i have this that it would probably hold a little better so i might have to work on that but still looking at them which one do you like better it's all up to you and this does it looks a little plain but it still looks pretty cool overall this does look a lot more interesting with the gold so i do like that we'll have to admit it does look more interesting with the gold in there and there we go with those comparisons and the extra accessories. I want to showcase this too with these other obscure characters we're making. This is the James and Bond for the Punch Counter Punch. And then we've got the Omnibot over here and Fioravante. And there's going to be more Omnibots on the way. I haven't really picked up... I, I did get the Japanese and the US version of this guy. I did not pick any color variations of these Omnibots. I probably will down the road just for some fun. But I think they nailed it the first go around on Fioravante. I believe they'll nail it on the other ones. But if they do youth versions, I probably will go with youth versions too of those because it's just kind of cool, actually. But no one else is making them. There is nobody else making any of these characters in the Masterpiece scale and nobody even hinting at it. So X Transbots is definitely winning this game. All right, this is my look at the youth versions of the Runabout Runabuck, the Fast and the Fury from X Transbots. I will say these do look far more interesting than the first releases, but first releases still look pretty cool overall. I will have these two in my main display now and put the other ones in a secondary display. That's just how that's going to go. Curious what you guys think about these. I did get these at Shozy Store. Now, these are actually sold out. Now, that might mean that they're just filling their pre-orders. And it says arrival notice. Maybe in a few days, they'll pop back up. I'm going to link to these down below. But there's pre-orders for the original set going back up. These are about 108 109 And the original set's about 98 99 These are about $10 more expensive than the original set. But let me know what you guys think about these in the comments below. Like and subscribe. And I do hang around. Decepticon comrades, there's been a misunderstanding.